Welcome to chapter one of the Services Marketing Text. In this chapter, we're going to be laying down the ground rules of content, definitions, some frameworks. So it's a fairly big chapter and it has a significant impact over the course of your semester. So what you'll find is that some of the ideas mentioned in this first chapter, when they recur, you want to see that as an opportunity. So that when you see this idea take place again, you know that it's an important concept. And also, using consumer behavior theory, it will go from being, in this chapter, a somewhere between a discontinuous and a continuous, uh, dynamically continuous innovation, through to being definitely a continuous innovation. You're like, hey, I know that, I've seen that, and that's comforting. So let's talk, what are we hoping to cover in this chapter. Now the learning objectives for this chapter and these slides is if you can walk away knowing what services are, you're confident in the expanded marketing mix, and you can think about the categorization of services. Those are some of the really important ones for me. It's also useful to be able to distinguish services from goods in terms of the theoretical and conceptual frameworks that apply. And lastly, there is a set of models near the end of the chapter that talk about the way services function. And these are overviews of some of the detail that we'll be covering across the course of the book. So really, what is a service? And the way to think about this is, this is a definition that helps you narrow down the aspects of marketing that are most relevant to this course. So for us, a service is an act. It's a performance. It results in an experience, and it comes from the skills that one party can offer. And there are a couple of component parts. It's essentially, it's a, an intangible event. You can't take ownership of the skills. You can take ownership possibly of a physical good that was a byproduct or an outcome, but you do not take ownership of the service itself. And significantly is that a service must create value for the recipient. Value doesn't necessarily have to be economic value, it doesn't have to be financial value, it has to be value as perceived by the recipient. So a service has a positive outcome of creating value, it doesn't result in, in ownership, and there's a level of intangibility to it. So with that in mind, we have this idea of that services and the definition of marketing. So we look back at the uh, AMA's definitions over time, services have always been an, an integral part of their definition. And we can see this in the 2004 definition where marketing is an activity and it's a process, and that services themselves are activities and their processes. So we have a real connection to the definition, and this allows you to see how marketing, as it's conceptualized, coordinates with marketing as it's practiced. Now let's talk about this concept, the offerings that have value. Now, across services and this semester, there are a lot of different types of service that exist, and there are a lot of different service products. And it's really important that when you're talking about this, you get a couple of terminologies down early. And one of them is that it's goods and services, not products and services. Products are the offerings that have value. Goods and services are means by which you can create products that have value. So on screen is a list of uh, possible service types. It's one of the reasons why, if you look at the business services, accountancy, law, management consulting, IT, services marketing is really useful for you if you plan on going into any of these career areas because it's going to be about presenting your own skill set in the best possible light for the best economic impact. And also as a services marketer, 
that you can start thinking about some of the challenges that you'll be facing as a service provider, if you're a professional accountant or some other form of professional, and particularly if you are a self-employed professional and you're going to consultancy, services marketing has a significant role to play in how your day-to-day -day life operates. So, having identified that we've got different offerings of value, let's talk about creation of value. Now, services are deemed, in terms of definition, they're an economic activity. This means that value is created. The performance of a set of skills generates an experience of value or an object of value. So even if there's no money exchange, value emerges. This is why services have actually become a very strong economic force, is that skill alone can generate value. If you're a programmer and you write code, you are creating. You're generating value where something did not exist before. Similarly, for being a writer, for being a journalist, for being a management consultant, for being a marketer, conceptualizing a new campaign, working out research, all these aspects are behaviors that result in value being created. So what you want to be thinking about across the course of this semester is the means by which you choose the type of value you want to create. Then you look at the processes and the activities that create that value. And then you look at the process and procedures that are going to be required to communicate the creation of the value to the customer or communicate the opportunity for the creation of value to a potential customer. So value is going to be a concept we're going to come back to a few times and we're going to be looking at how it operates and how it interplays with the different frameworks and also from a marketer's perspective services are one of the easiest places to create a new product but at the same time as you know from the Ansoff matrix, diversification is one of the hardest tasks a marketer will do. So creating a new product for a new audience as a service provider, you are able to do that with your own skills, but it's one of the most challenging things you can do in marketing. So it's a good balance. So this is an outlay, an outline of the semester, the value creation and the value delivery process. First couple of chapters are going to be about how do we choose the value, and this comes to the fundamentals of marketing, segmentation, positioning, market focus, a lot of the core fundamentals we get. You will hopefully recognize these from intro, or if you've done strategy, you'll see these as familiar areas. Now this is an important thing to remember, is that marketing is very cyclical and it's very cross-wired. So if you see an area that you're familiar with, Relax, you're on good solid ground. You don't have to go, oh, I know this, and dismiss it. You can go, yes, I know this, I can build on it. So we start with choose the value. We move into the creation of value and the discussion around value that you'll see here that we're dealing with distribution, price, products, three of the marketing mix components get a really strong run here. Then we come down to communicate the value. And services is actually an interesting area where promotion and promotional mix is really important and exceptionally hard because of the nature of the service product being intangible, being invisible, being difficult to describe, you really have to work for your uh, communications. So these are this is the structure. This is how the course is going to pan out, and these are how, how the content blocks will work. It is worth noting that this approach of choose, create, communicate can also loop back around from communication back to selection. So communicate to choose to create. Similarly, communicate can go back to create because during the process of communication, you may find that you actually develop a new product offer or you create a value offer or create additional value that the customer hadn't previously recognized was going to be part. So moving now 
into a couple of theoretical frameworks. And this is where we're going to get into some heavy duty thinking. Top of the list of frameworks you need to be aware of is the service dominant logic. Now, Vargo and Lush put this paper out in 2004 that talks about service dominant logic. The 2008 paper, continuing the evolution, is like the sequel. In fact, it's one of the rare times that the sequel is better than the original. So here in service dominant logic, we talk about the theory of value comes from the use. SDL is actually about physical goods acquiring the characteristics, nature, and supporting theories of intangible services. And the idea here is that in all of marketing, every end user, every client or customer is a co-creator of value. How and when you use a product determines its value and you can enhance the value of a product through skilled use and the application of skills, activities, processes. It also premises on the idea that customers must engage in order for value to emerge. So this does give a conceptual framework. It's one of the big theories of the 2000s. So this is uh, an area, again, this will be one of the readings you'll be looking at. So it's worth familiarizing yourself with SDL because it is a big, one of the big picture theoretical uh, contributions and has been influencing how we see the world. So that's the conceptual base and the conceptual frameworks. What you're going to be dealing with for this semester in the first block is we look at this in terms of what are the ideas that are at play here. So we have the idea of value. We have the idea of creation of value through service. We have the idea of service summit logic, which says all activities and applications of service can generate value. So these become important component parts to look at together.